a lot more client meetings via Zoom. Right. So it's like, oh, I'm going gonna, gonna to sound clearly and all that. So might as well. Yeah. And you can get one at Best Buy for not too much. So yeah. And I think I actually, so I, I was actually listening to, I think one, I think it was one of your podcasts that you mentioned, which mic you bought. Yeah. I was like, if this doesn't pan out, that's kind of like the next step <laughs> for me. Perfect. Okay. Well, I'm going to hit record and then okay. we can start the, oops. Are you at the end of your work day or you still have work to do? I want to say towards the end. <laughs> it, it really depends. It really yeah. depends, but I'm going to say, yeah, it's we're near the end. Nice. Okay. Yourself? I guess day off, no, I'm right? Today. So yeah, I'm always off Sundays and Mondays. So yeah, I went for a hike today and did some exercise and it's still beautiful out. So there's oh, a lot of day left. <laughs> oh, it's awesome to know, like after I finish work here, there's still some daylight exactly yeah okay well why don't we start off by you introducing yourself and then um we'll go from there yeah for sure so my name is Josue Duvon I'm one of the wealth mentors and founders here at Design Wealth um and I guess I'm originally from Winnipeg even though I moved to the island uh, a couple of years I think my second anniversary is coming up nice. but it's 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 been a blast and a half. I can't I have zero complaints and I love it here. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. Okay. How did you get into finance or what made you want to get into that? That's actually a really good question. It's actually something that I, I like to discuss in yeah. my for first client meetings. Whenever I meet somebody for the first time, uh, I like to describe it like a first date. You get to know <laughs> me. Right. I get to know you a little bit, but I, I like to always tell people why it is that I started. Yeah. Um, there's, there's two reasons. So the big one that I uh, that really like sticks with me is so back in 2005, uh, my not to make it start off with a sad story, but uh, my my grandfather passed away, leaving my grandmother with a with a home uh, and a mortgage that that came with it. Uh, mm -hmm. It was assumed that through his work and that, uh, his I think it was his employer for almost his whole time he's been living here in Canada, that the life insurance policy was going to be able to pay off what was the, the balance. Right. Unfortunately, that was far from the case. Mm -hmm. So my, my grandma had to sell the house, move, downsize to an apartment, um, find work. And it, it really set her back. It really did set her back a lot. And it was just seeing her go through that by herself, mm -hmm. knowing that that's probably something my grandfather wouldn't have wanted had he known what would pan out. Yeah. So long story short, to make it nice and sweet, um, the, my grandma ended up buying a house on the same block that her and my grandfather first bought together. Aww. So it, 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 it kind of comes to a nice ending, but it, it, it did sit her back quite a few years. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm talking like maybe a decade or so. Wow. So, so before she but, could yeah. buy a house again. Exactly. And she had to do it all on her own this time. And I, I think I, I, I would like to believe that if my grandfather knew what would have happened, he probably would have done more to make sure that that didn't need to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I, that really struck with me. And I, and I always ask myself, is there something I could have done? Obviously, I was a, I was a child back then, so I couldn't mm -hmm. do much. But I look back and I ask myself, is there something I could have done to change the scenario? Yeah. And um, well, that's that's how I'm sitting in the seat today. Um, Very cool. So yeah. And then so then that's so then you went to school then for for your job currently. So yeah, being a well, so traditionally I'm I'm lumped in with financial planners. Okay. And um, so yes, I did do my Bachelor of Commerce at the Asper School of Business at the University of Manitoba, but um, there was definitely it was definitely a drop in the bucket to where i am today um mm -hmm. so both my business partner and i we both are have our certified financial planners so we are with our cfp so we do have a good technical knowledge of financial planning um and that would kind of be the part after school um okay. so to get your cfp it, it's a new rule where one does require a bachelor's degree mm -hmm. um it definitely is very helpful if you have some sort of finance background. It definitely makes it easier for sure. Yeah. Uh, not to say that it's unmanageable, but yeah. 
they would just be a steep learning curve. And how many years is your bachelor's of commerce? Yeah, so mine, I did get a bachelor, like an honors degree. So it took about, for me, it took about four and a half years. Okay. A little bit longer than your traditional four, but um, so I took about four and a half years on that. And then the CFP itself took another, because it's self-study, traditionally mm -hmm. it's done in two out, two years. Yeah. But I was able to do it in about a year and a half. Nice. So again, it really depends, but I'm going to say the average takes about two years. So yeah, four, four, we'll say four plus two. So a total of six years. Cool. And then, so you're saying you and your business partner. So do you, did you start the company with your business partner that you're working for now? Yeah. So a big, so I guess a part of, to go back a little bit. So I originally started in the industry in Winnipeg mm -hmm. um, and it was with a high net worth firm. But it was one of those things where I, I wanted to work with individuals who were kind of going through the same life stages as I was, just younger still, mm -hmm. just just still new to things. And uh, unfortunately, not like not blaming anyone, they had a minimum investment requirement. Oh. Um, many individuals who walked in the door had to have at least two hundred fifty thousand dollars right. to work with with them and. I don't know about you, but I don't know many people my age or maybe our age that have that kind of money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it's playing it's, around. It's no. and that's cash. And that's not including things like your home. Like that doesn't oh, that's We're just talking. in your bank account. That's just in your bank account. Yeah. So I, I don't know many people like that. And no. I know a part of me definitely feels that those that don't have that probably need the most help or yeah. you, you could seek that advice. So, Get there. Exactly. And that's assuming that it's even needed. Yeah. Um, some individuals don't ever, won't ever see 250, not because they don't save or anything like that. It's just their lifestyle might never require it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why save more than, than what is needed? I use the analogy yeah. of the airport. Um, we all know that about two hours is a good amount to be at the airport before you, for, before your flight. If you get there half an hour before your flight, well, you might not make it, i.e. you're going to have to make some adjustments. Same idea with saving. You don't have enough savings. You're not going to hit your goal. Yeah. You have too much savings. Um, going back to the airport, airport analogy, you could be at the airport eight hours in advance, but why? Yeah. Like you could use something, you could go for brunch, you could sleep in, like there's many other ways yeah. to use that time, better ways. So same thing with saving. And why why save so much if we don't need it all? Exactly. So I, I it's definitely I think one thing I pride myself in 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 here is that it's just the rhetoric around finance is definitely a lot different than yeah. um, traditionally. And uh, then do you do you see people with in your company now? Then like they don't need a minimum. They don't need all the things that you're talking about before. They they can just come in and see you with no requirements so yeah so i guess continuing on with the story there there was an idea i always felt like there was something different that needed to be done because not everyone has two hundred fifty thousand. yeah but they still what can i do to give them access to advice so throughout the process throughout finding individuals that share this mentality um there's a lot of this industry is very um, unfortunately well known for the wrong reasons, i.e. chasing money. But um, mm -hmm. I knew that there was, there was great people. There was great people in this industry for the right reasons. And so as I was looking around for different firms and just individuals that shared this idea with me, like we need, there's people that want access to advice, just are being denied of it. Mm -hmm. And because for the simple fact that they don't have the money to access it. So it's something, so as I started looking around, uh, I, I came across my business partner now and he, it was just an idea. Just, we, we wanted to do something. We know more was needed, but we just weren't sure. And for me, that was enough. Like someone who understood that was enough for me to say, yeah, like, I think this is going to be a great partnership. Um, and that's, kind of, we didn't even have a need. It was just an idea at the time. And like we're design wealth is an initiative of Fernhill Financial. So Fernhill Financial has been around for about 25 years, all here in Victoria. 
Mm -hmm. um, but Design Wealth has been more so the past, I'm going to say three years. Yeah. And it's been a lot of research and it's, it's now, um, the way we've formatted it is yes, you're right. No one needs to become, you can be with negative dollars. I've had clients who have a lot of credit card, who had a lot of credit card debt, mm -hmm. um, and not a single dollar to their name. So again, not to say that we would want, we want someone in that scenario. Um, I, it's unfortunate if someone is, but obviously we, we are here to help. Yeah. But um, the point being, you don't have to have two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, so what we did instead was, well, if it, not everyone has that kind of money, but everyone has a degree of income, but we don't want a flat rate fee because, for I'm I'm traditionally supposed to be charging about one hundred eighty dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. Well, for for some people, 180 bucks isn't that much. For others, 180 dollars is quite a bit. And if we if we required like five hours in every month, well, that's going to add up very quickly. Yeah. So we didn't want to do it in a flat rate. So we said, okay, well, what else could we do? So we decided to do it as a percentage of someone's income. Oh, that's that, perfect. So it's actually proportional to each individual. And naturally speaking, if you make more money, you you do have more complexities. Mm -hmm. You do have more goals. Yeah. Um, and it's not a bad thing. It's just, it requires more time. Mm -hmm. And we do cap out at, um, and people ask us, why Why do you have a maximum fee? Why, why wouldn't you want to charge someone uh, like even more if you could? But we just feel like the value of our advice maxes out at that income level. Like we don't see our advice being any more valuable. And we, we tell people that, like we're, we're honest in that. So, so what we've done is, we've uh, incorporated that into people's cash flow and okay. in that. So it's a part of the process that we do here at Design yeah. Wealth. It's a little different in this. Um, we, we focus on the individual first. So even though other firms will say that, oh, we're very people, goal, goals-based investing is my favorite, I think, term. And, it, and then some people ask, well, what were you doing before? And it's like, oh, not sure. But <laughs> <laughs> people are like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's one of it's the first five meetings that we have five to six we don't even talk about money huh. the, the subject of money doesn't come up um and it's it, it's really exactly oh yeah, well, yeah i'm more than happy to share that yeah so we actually the very first no, first meeting after the first date is what i'll call after our first date we and we start to get into it and people are like yeah let's do it um, we do something called the vision scenario. Um, and it, we go through three scenarios. So I, I'll actually read them to you. Yeah. So scenario one, uh, obviously you don't have to answer them correctly, but okay. we, scenario one, you wake up tomorrow morning and find the value of all your accounts, all your businesses, the empire that you own is more than enough to take care of all your needs for you and your family now and into the future. You are done. You do not have to make any more money. The question is, how would you live your life? Would you change anything? And how would you let yourself go? So that's the first scenario. And then this is where individuals share what they would do, what any anything that's been on their mind. Scenario two, you visit your doctor and sadly they let you know that you have a terminal illness and you're gonna have five to 10 years to live. The good news is you will never feel sick for a moment of the time that remains. The bad news is, you have no notice of the final day of death. You do not have unlimited funds, just the time, money, and energy, and talent that you possess right now. Again, my question is, what would you do in the time you have remaining? Would you change anything? How would you live your life? And then the last scenario, this time you're going to see a doctor and with no option for a second opinion, the doctor shocks you with the news that you only have one day left to live. So time is up. But this isn't about how you're going to live your final day, as we can all think of very beautiful things. Instead, notice what feelings arise as you confront your very real mortality, reflecting on your life, all your accomplishments, as well as all the things that will remain undone. Ask yourself, what did I miss? What did I not get to be? What did I not get to do? Interesting. 
So these are the three scenarios that we go through individuals and uh, we, we take a break after each one just to just to see what their responses are. And it's, it's always, we learn a lot about an individual and the purpose of these scenarios is to really bring out what's important to an, uh, what's important to them. Yeah. Um, I have yet to receive a response of what's something that you got to miss out on was, oh, I wish I had saved more in life. It wasn't that would, that's at the end of the day, money is just a tool. Yeah. When, and, and one well, of our big months when you're in that scenario, probably. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, one thing we, we really, one of our mantras, if you want to call it is uh, money is worthless. It's money's uh, it's just, it w- it's what it can give to us that we truly care about. Mm-hmm. Um, so that can be time with family, time with friends. Um, that's what we care about, not not the money itself. Huh. Um, there was a study done that seventy seven. Uh, uh, it was a study from Cornell University that seventy seven percent of people had the same regret on their deathbed. Um, it was they regret not living the, their ideal life, huh. and that's what this last qu- this last scenario is really supposed to bring out. Like, what is something that you would regret? Yeah, because we can address it now. Yeah, and then do it. Exactly. Yeah. So th- these scenarios are kind of like our, our, our foundation to as the, we go forward in the process. Interesting. So, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so then you so see what would, so that would be one meeting. Yep. And then what would you go to next? Because you wouldn't then talk about money. No, we don't then talk about money. So, then we start to discuss, okay, well, what steps do we need to get there? Mm-hmm. We talk about, okay, you, you've talked about, let's say the individual says, I, I really want to go travel to, if someone has a background from uh, somewhere in Europe, and they say, I really want to go visit my, my ancestral homeland. Okay, awesome. That's something that you said you wanted to do. What steps do we need to take to get there? Okay. And that, that we start to break down these little things. And we, we also maybe bring in other steps that maybe weren't mentioned in the scenarios, but help uh, fulfill that overall goal. And just break down the steps. What do I require to get there? What do I require to get there? Um, and then from there, we, uh, we then talk about, okay, what obstacles are gonna, what, what's gonna get in our way? Yeah. Uh, obviously there's some very obvious ones like, oh, I need money to buy a home one day, for example. Mm-hmm. That's an obstacle, absolutely. Uh, another one is um, if I'm not able to travel for whatever reason. Like again, what can get in our way yeah. of achieving this ultimate goal? And it's always interesting when someone doesn't have a lot of what can get in the way, or it's very psychological. Yeah. Because that then it requires deeper discussion as to why that is or why haven't we done this yet? Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So so there's a lot of that. And then from there. Uh, we ask them to break it down. So these are the steps that you've said we need to be do to achieve these goals. But you tell us which goals are most important to you. Mm-hmm. And you and whoever the individual is, you would say, oh, well, this is most important than this, than this, than this. Um, we only have so many resources. So we got to know where to prioritize uh, what our goals are just our goal uh we only have so much so what are we going to tackle first yeah and so again building on design well again design wealth is a lot of there's a lot of human behavior and behavioral economics involved and uh, i never would have thought that that kind of approach that's not what i was expecting you to say or come here yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. that, that kind of approach is what you would go to i've never gone to a financial planner or anything like that but i wouldn't think that that's what you would talk about not i'm going to say right now if you walked into another financial planner's office it's probably not what you're going to talk about you're going to get right into the tfsa rsps um you're going to get right into that kind of conversation. Yeah. It's not a bad conversation. It's just what we've found. It's a little premature. I I can't, I can't tell with you with a hundred percent confidence that an RSP is better for your scenario than TFSA or something else. I can't, I couldn't, not on our first meeting at least. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah. So that's kind of what we go through the design wealth process. And then after that kind of takes about, five meetings, I'll say on average. And then that's when we start to talk about cash flow. 
finally the conversation of money comes up. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, going back to the behavioral economics, there's a there's something called the uh, the IKEA effect, uh -huh. which is we we place more value on items or things that we create. Um, it's 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 a little different than the endowment effect. The endowment effect it involves we just place more value on things that we own. Hmm. The IKEA is things that we create, hence like the IKEA. We, we create shelves and yeah and wardrobes and all that. So, but we start to realize how much work that went into that. Yeah. And we place more value on it and now that we created it. Again, we're, we're touching on that here in the sense of you are creating your own plan here. You are prioritizing what it is that you want to do. At the end of the day, I'm, I don't want to say it doesn't matter to me, but it's not my life. It's yours. Yeah. Um, when I, why somebody like to go back before the meetings, what would bring somebody to book an appointment with you or to come and see you? What do you see a lot of that? Because I wouldn't think to really come to a financial planner. And I don't mm. know if that's just because like I haven't really had many experiences with that, but yeah. what would bring somebody to come to you? So most people come to us with the very traditional reasons. I want to open up an RSP. I was told investing was a good thing to do. Uh, it's still, it's very, we still have a lot of that rhetoric. Mm -hmm. uh, how should I be investing? I get a lot of that question. How should I, what should I invest in? And I tell people, look, I, I, one, I don't do the investments myself because that's a full-time job. So we do have investment partners, but I don't answer the question. How to, how do you best invest your money? That's mm -hmm. not my first question or that's not my main question. My main one is how do we best use our money? And there's a big difference between the two because how do we best use our money now addresses things like, well, if you have debt, um, how, what's the significance of it? Does it keep you up at night? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it properly managed? Uh, do you want to save up for school? Like, again, what are these, what's the overall picture? Mm -hmm. But yet people come to us still thinking or asking the question, I want to start an RSP. I was told that I should open up a TFSA. I want to start investing. I've heard it's really good. I've read a lot of books. I've listened to a lot of great investing podcasts or what, again, all these reasoning that we, we've been good to kind of scale it back on them and like realize that investing itself is just a tool. Mm -hmm. I think every, I've seen a lot of other financial planners, other advisors, uh, really, really drill down on, you need to start investing. Um, I think one thing that really bothers my business partner and I is imagine if you had saved all the money you spent on coffee, uh, how much money it could grow to look at it. And it, I think, and then I, 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 I remember someone teaching me that and then they themselves go to buy a coffee later. I'm like, eh, something about that doesn't like, is it a little hypocritical? I don't know. That's something doesn't feel right about that. Oh, I know. And then you feel guilty when you spend your money, right? And for us, that's, we, we don't like that one bit. If you ask us, money is meant to be spent. Mm -hmm. That's why we do it. That's why we save. That's what, like, it's meant to be spent. Yeah. Again, responsibly on, on things that you care about. Yeah. Uh, we, I don't care what an individual spends on as long as with it's within reason and it makes sense for your life mm -hmm. um i'm a i'm always honest with individuals and in saying like for example i, I like playing soccer mm -hmm. and i will be the first one to tell someone i'm a washed up soccer player but i will something i really enjoy doing is buying the top of the line cleats does it make sense absolutely not <laughs> but i i did something i enjoy doing it's the process it's it's all of it so why would I, I, I don't want someone to judge me mm -hmm. on purchasing. Why would I judge someone else on buying some cl on clothing or buying a vacation or like it's it's all individual and what we care about. Again, making mm -hmm. sure that it falls within what we see as a wealthy life. Right. Because what you see as wealthy life is going to be different than what I see as a wealthy life than what someone else will. So. Okay. It's defining that. And then I guess with that, how do you have like a, 
some quick tips or something like that for saving on the other hand when you're trying to save up for a home or a vacation or school or whatever you're trying to save up for so saving in itself is a can be very it can feel a difficult task mm -hmm. like a difficult task and i actually wrote a, a blog post that's even goes like from a behavioral economics standpoint the act of saving is actually incredibly unfulfilling uh, yeah it's incredibly unfulfilling why because one, you're taking away money that you can spend today. And two, you're putting it towards an obscure goal. You can't see it. Like, yeah, it's for a home or yeah, it's for a vacation. But I, I don't really know what that, I, I can't experience it today. Uh -huh. As humans, we're very much into instant gratification. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult for us to, to delay it. So the first thing that we discuss money-wise is cash flow because a part of that component is savings. And if we don't get our cash flow done right, we're not going to be able to adequately start saving towards these goals, like assuming they're what individuals care about. Yeah. I think one thing I've discovered over, uh, I'll say years doing this, many people come in and saying, I want to buy a home. And what I, what I notice is that they, they don't want a home for them, for their purposes necessarily. They they want a home because they've been told they want a home. Right. That's the goal, right? That's the goal. That's the dream. <laughs> and that renting is has a stigma behind it that is just a stepping stone for you to reach that ultimate wealth, which is a home. Right. And I, I, it's very easy to notice who who is and isn't, who does and doesn't care about actually owning a home right um at the end of the day that's a completely different conversation <laughs> something i do discover with individuals and it's something yeah. i ask and i say well what what is it that you actually care about do you actually care about owning a home or is it that you're told that yeah. you should own it Be brought up to you always have to get there right you, oh, that, that that's your goal that's your goal and, yeah uh, it's especially for our generation it's a little tougher to achieve that goal given current circumstances yeah um but I, what i've noticed it's more of a qualitative decision than a quantitative decision yeah um i'll use myself an example as an example i i rent and mm -hmm. does that make me any less of a person no i've actually run my own numbers and i actually end out ahead i end up ahead by renting investing money than it is to own a home and have that appreciate over time. Again, there's so many factors though that can make home ownership better than renting mm -hmm. or condominium. Like it's, it's, there's so many factors that at the end of the day, it's more qualitative based in the sense of, I have kids, I really want them to have a backyard. Yeah. Well, an apartment might not get you that. So yeah, yeah. you know what? You want exactly. Mind. So it's really dependent on qualitative factors rather than quantitative. Right. Yeah. But going back to how do we save for our house and all that. So what we do here is it's, it's, it's kind of that actually, it's actually the next step in the process. So it's a good segue. Mm -hmm. We, st we call it a master your cash. This, and we, this is when we start to talk about numbers okay. and it's, it's a very simple concept. It's not, we're not reinventing the wheel here. If anything, we're kind of going back to principles that we always knew. Um, I'm sure maybe you were told as a child, I know I was, Hey, you got five bucks for your birthday, save two of it and you can spend the three bucks yeah. however you want. You that idea is the same, except age. yeah, yeah, it's, it's a same idea. Just now we're adults with, uh, with um, access to adult toys and all that. And now we got ATVs, people want ATVs and well, there, that's not three bucks anymore. That's yeah. three grand now. Well, I don't know. Yeah. But it's, it's bringing that principle back. So what we do is we take your net monthly amount. So what pretty much what you get in your paycheck, you just got to figure out what that is mm -hmm. on a monthly basis. Take your monthly amount. The first thing we do is subtract 12%. I say subtract, but you set aside 12% and put it towards your financial well-being. Okay. One thing we've noticed is if you look at any uh, financial blog or 
uh, listen to any financial podcast on financial planning or anything like that, the first thing they always say is put your set a set some money aside first before spending it. Right. But if you look at any traditional budgeting sheet, the very first expense or the very first aspect of that money comes off is is your mortgage or your rent. Mm -hmm. So it, it kind of contradicts each other in the sense of well, that, that's not making a lot of sense. Yeah. So that's the first thing we do. 12%, 12%. we just take that away. Um, then from there, we look at, at fixed reoccurring costs. So what does that mean? So rent is a great, rent mortgage. Great example. You know it's going to happen on a month to month basis. Mm -hmm. And then we try to find other things that are like this as well. So your cell phone bill, right down to your Netflix, Spotify, whatever other things that we know are going to happen on a month to month basis consistently. And then once we subtract that, whatever is left, spend it. Okay. Spend it. And uh, again, we're advocates for it. It's not, we're not saying, oh, you should try to stash the rest of it. But if, if, you've, ex if you've already addressed your savings, you've already addressed your fixed reoccurring costs. Yeah. Why not spend the rest? Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a very simple concept. And it's a it's something that a lot of individuals can do today. Uh, we're in the middle of developing an online calculator, so yeah. people can just easily do it and input it. They don't have to really do the math themselves, but um, and it will actually spit out uh, what we use is a weekly spending amount. Okay. So we don't use monthly. We use a weekly, a guilt-free weekly spending amount. So that's what it. Once you income comes in, twelve percent gone. Then from there, reoccurring costs, it'll give you a monthly amount mm -hmm. because we typically do it in months, but you, I guess, multiply that by 12 divided by 52 weeks. Yeah. I'll give you a weekly amount and every week you have that much to spend. What about things like gas or groceries? Would that be in your fixed? Mm -hmm. So costs? again, it depends on specifically to the gas. If you have a very consistent gas bill, because mm -hmm. you know that a certain route, you do certain routes all the time, yeah, it could go into the fixed cost. But if it's very inconsistent, like mine, yeah, mine, mine is inconsistent. Um, I actually put it, I don't set it as a fixed cost and I actually put it towards my variable weekly spending amount. Okay. Now groceries, that's one, that people, one question I always get, like groceries, I have to eat. Isn't that a fixed cost? No. I say it's not, and it actually comes out of the uh, the weekly spending amount. Okay. Reason reason for this is the example I like to use is Oreos because I'm a big fan of Oreos. <laughs> so um, I could buy the name brand Oreos, or I could buy the no name or the store brand Oreos. Yeah. There's a price difference between the two. Mm -hmm. I have an option as to what what that will be. Yeah. Now I can I being a Oreo connoisseur will tell you the the name brand like the Oreos are better, but again, that's up to me to decide. Yeah. And everyone eats differently, I guess. So the cost Every, differently. Exactly. Exactly. And some individuals like organic mm -hmm. uh, vegetables where others might not care for it. I, there's so much discrepancy between what two baskets could look like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That we, we say, you know what, leave it or take it out of your weekly spending amount because there's might there might be some days that you do want to spend extra on a certain type of food where other weeks you might say no i'm, I'm good with just the regular spices or no or store brand version of it yeah so huh. and and then this is where your coffees like i i buy my coffees every day and yeah. i have zero guilt knowing that i'm everything else is taken care of hey, you're within your your um, budget, right i'm within my weekly spending amount and it's it's so why why not yeah why not and it's there to be spent it's money that i don't feel bad spending yeah because yeah everything is taken care of everything else is taken care of interesting yeah, yeah. i think it would be interesting to write down like all the fixed costs and that kind of thing plus the the monthly income and yeah i, I don't think i've ever really broken it down that way but interesting and and I tell individuals, as long as you stay within that weekly spending amount, mm -hmm. you should have money for everything else. 
yeah. like mathematically speaking, it, it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now it's when you start going over that weekly spending amount, something's got to give. Yeah. It's just the numbers don't lie. Something's got to give. Yeah. Um, there's a, the reason why we use the weekly spending amount is as humans, we're not very good at analyzing our opportunity costs. So uh, an example of this, there were behavioral uh, economists looking at, they went into, they walked into a, a dealership of one car brand and they asked individuals buying vehicles. Uh, I think it was, I forget what a car brand was, but if you can't, if you buy this vehicle today, what can't you buy now? Mm -hmm. And the first question or the first answer people gave was, uh, I don't know. Well, that in its own is a little concerning because yeah. you don't know what's being given up. But right. then when given more time to think about it, they said, well, if I buy car A today, I won't be able to buy car B. I think it was Toyota. If I buy a Toyota today, I won't be able to buy a Honda. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, yes, but at the same time, we're not very good at understanding or seeing the opportunity cost through different categories in th different time frames. Yes. So the answer answer should be truly like, if I buy this vehicle today, I might not be able to go on that vacation with my family or I might have to delay retirement for three years. Yeah. Or four years. Is, is, is yeah. that something I want to do? Long term, right? Ex exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So different time frames, different categories. Mm -hmm. And we're not the greatest at doing that as humans. And we're like, how often do you go if you were to buy a coffee and say, what can I not buy now if I buy this coffee today? It's like, nothing <laughs> I don't know I don't know yeah. money money represents everything in print money represents in principle everything that we can buy today and in the future hmm. it's yeah. just being able to decipher what does what does that mean right so going back to opportunity costs if we were given a monthly amount we realized throughout in the first week probably that we're going to run out of money for the rest of the month well, if that's the case, we, that's when the mo opportunity costs, oh my goodness, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just blew it all in a month, in a week. It doesn't kick, it kicks in, a, it doesn't kick in early enough. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we have, if I were to give you, let's say 50 bucks every morning or 10 bucks every morning, you will know that I only have $10 today. How am I going to spend it? Now, obviously a daily basis is going to be a little too constricting but a weekly amount, you'll realize by Wednesday or Thursday that I only have X amount to, to last me the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. So rather than leaving it for the whole month, a week is kind of a nice balance between the, the daily, which is a little too constricting, whereas the month is a little too much. Right. So a week is a good amount. And it's, it's, it's we, a lot of what we do, I start mine on Mondays. Yeah. Because you're more likely to spend if you were to start on a weekend Mm -hmm. Then start on Monday again. Little things like that. We it just doesn't. As humans, we're interesting. Yeah. But it it all makes sense. The psychology of it. <laughs> yeah, and again, this is a lot less to do with finances and more of behavioral economics side of it. We, that's why we end up with individuals saying, "I don't know what it is that I did, but it it worked out, and like I'm paying off my debt, and I'm like on track. Like I don't know what I'm doing, but it's changing the environment. Yeah. And realizing that we're humans. Um, and we will think irrationally, we are human. So therefore we, we just, we aren't the perfect rational individuals that we study in economics, right? But we're very predictable in our irrationalities. Yeah. yeah. So it's about a changing our environment to actually adapt to that. Hmm. Is there any kind of online tools or something that somebody could use do you have any on your website or anything like that so that so that we weren't able actually to find any online tools that follow the same principle yeah so that's why we're creating our own okay uh it's currently in the process it's like i was hoping that it would be done at some point this week <laughs> yeah so it's 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 down the pipeline though so i'm hoping by the end of the month that we'll have it very but cool. it's it's gonna Put out if you put all your basically all the your income mm -hmm. and the fixed costs and then it'll spit out your weekly spending mm -hmm. and do it all for you yep so that's that's what we're producing yeah it just the way we would go with our own clients is very similar to what we're going to be making that mm -hmm. way individuals don't have to oh what did i have to do like well like 
just make sure the equation's correct on the back end. Yeah, the numbers. Exactly. So at the end of the day, we were, we were more than happy to give that away if you want to call it. It's not really, any, it's not rocket science. Yeah. I, I, I'm telling you this and you're like, yeah, that'll make sense. That sounds super easy. <laughs> and it does sound simple. Yeah. It, it is. And it's, but what we realize is the hardest aspect is the accountability. Right. Is the account, making sure that you're staying on top of it. And we even go as, uh, so we check in on our, for us, we check in on our clients all the time. Hey, how are things doing? Is this weekly spending amount good for you? Mm-hmm. If it's, if you're complete, if you're consistently going over, well, we got to address something. Yes. Because we can't, something's got to give. So either we, we reduce our expenses. Again, the last thing we want to touch um, is the pay yourself first, the mm-hmm. savings aspect of it. This is kind of the last thing we want to touch, but yeah, cut but out at, spending. But at, exactly. But at the end of the day, if you want to have five subscriptions and they're all important to you, mm-hmm. go for it. As long uh, as long as we have enough on the weekly spending amount, and you right. within that, go go nuts. And we even go as far as to say, um, so I didn't bring mine with me, but we we go with uh, reloadable prepaid cards. So things like Coho and Stack, we, we don't have any affiliation with them. We just noticed that these are two tools that are working. Yeah. Um, so every week we tell our clients, put, let's say someone had $200 for a weekly spending amount, transfer $200 into that card. And that now becomes your credit card for every little day purchases. Mm, yeah. Why? There's, a, uh, there's psychology behind it as well, like credit cards itself. Mm-hmm. The way they're set up, the way they're designed, every time we spend something, that debt level starts to increase. But we see all we see is a number increasing. And again, subconsciously, we think and we know that a number increasing is actually a good thing. And it's obviously in the case of credit card debt, it's not. Mm-hmm. Whereas this prepaid card actually has like $200. It starts with $200. And as humans, we actually hate losing. We don't like the idea of losing something, even if it's given to us for free and then it's taken away. We don't compute very well that this was a free item. We just, the feeling of losing it feel, it doesn't, we don't like it. So you actually start with $200 and as you start to spend, it starts to go down to zero. Yeah. Again, small ch- shift, but it's all, it's all play, plays a process in. Yeah. And it, it's funny, at least for me, I don't know if it's a regular thing, but if I have cash, I'm more conscious of how much I have than if I'm using a card, which I rarely ever have cash. But if I have cash and I spend it, then I'm like, oh, okay, now I only have this much cash left. Right. It's, it's, it's actually, there's actually a term for it. It's called the pain of pain, okay. making it, making it painful to pay. So there's, there's extremes you could go when it comes to this, uh, like I've, I've even reckoned to recommend it to one individual. They were, uh, they're vegan. And I said, if you end up going over your weekly amount for every dollar that you spend over, you have to match it. That has to go to a hunting, like a rifle, oh, like a hunting association, yeah. i.e. increasing that pay of pain. That, that, that's like, again, there's extremes that you could go, but yes, <laughs> yeah. th- that, that's that example of using cash. Yeah. There's something that can be said about, physically seeing it mm-hmm. and it's not it's it's a human a- aspect of it um there, an example or a, uh, if you want to call it a, a study the, if you go back in time with me to the days when cattle goats all that were were, were the form of assets mm-hmm. and savings yeah um, we could see it it was very easy for us to see what we had i had i have two two pigs a couple of cows all that um and naturally as humans we we like to compete with one another yeah we, we don't know it but we do so as if for example if uh you saw that from your from your day at work you cross my lawn and you notice that oh he only has two pigs and a cow well i have three cows and five pigs and seven chickens and you I- naturally start to exactly you start to naturally tell yourself I'm better off than he is. Yeah. And if you start to compare yourself to everyone else, we're like, okay, well, I'm better off than everyone else. I'm, I'm going to be in a good position. Well, now our savings in, in modern day, our savings are virtually invisible. 
Like I, I do, it's very difficult. Look and, on an app to see how much your money. Exactly, is. and and it's it doesn't touch on that human competitiveness that we naturally have. I'm not saying it's a good thing that we compete and compare with each other. I don't. It is it is difficult to consciously say no. I, you know what? It is it's okay that I don't have that. It, but we have to consciously tell ourselves that. Yeah. Because our, our subconscious mind will want to say, you don't have that. You need to have that. Mm -hmm. Which is obviously not the path we want to go down. But yeah, something that's one could say that the modern day version of a physical savings is investment property. Yeah. I can actually touch it. It's yeah. a savings, and others can see it. Yeah. Um, and. So there's that aspect of it. So if we don't see our savings, but we very vividly see our spending, I can see what you spend. You could see what I spend. I can see what everyone else spends on. Again, as humans, what do you think we're going to want to focus on? Yeah. And, and when we spend on something like, let's say, fancy clothes or a purse or nice car or something, yeah, that makes us look more wealthy, right? Oh, it does. And compared to somebody else who maybe doesn't have the nice car or the nice clothes, but it doesn't mean that you're wealthy. It just makes you look like you are. And I, I completely agree with you. <laughs> I completely agree with you. It doesn't signify wealth. Like it, let's say it used to back in the day when we actually could see our savings. Mm -hmm. Well, we can see our spending now, but it doesn't signify wealth. No. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't. So I get, um, there can there is something to your point. There can be something said about physically being able to pay with cash. Yeah. Seeing it, leaving, leaving your hand and saying, do I really want to pay for this? Yeah. Have been um, half in your card and it's done. It, it delays the pain. It delays the pain. You don't see the money coming out of your, that, that bill comes later. That pain comes later. So today you've enjoyed whatever yeah. it is that you've tapped your card on your swipe there or whatever. Yeah, um, you're enjoying it today. And it, it, there's a lot. I'm not bashing credit cards. It definitely can. It, it can play a role. There's yes, there are rewards, but it's making sure that we also stay within that amount. As human, we're not very good at mental accounting. Mm -hmm. Even myself, uh, I tell individuals I went through the process myself. In the first two weeks, I I went to go buy. I forget what it was. I tapped my card and my prepaid credit card and it said denied. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then sure enough, I checked the app and I was like, I only got four bucks left. Yeah, yeah that's not going to work. <laughs> but I, even myself. So I, I, I know that if I, if I was, let's say, victim to it, if I want to call myself that, I know others are, could very well be in that same scenario. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I've dialed it down now to the exact amount, but it takes time. Yeah. It takes time and to find that sweet spot. If you're doing those prepaid cards, what about mm -hmm. all the credit card like reward systems? Exactly. So good question. I get that a lot. Well, I'm losing out on all the rewards. Yeah. Like At the cash back or something like yeah. that. Yeah. So you it's not to say you're never using your credit card. A lot of your if you still if you have like subscriptions, Netflix, Spotify, those are still on the regular credit card. Right. Um, your phone bill, that's still on the regular credit card. Um, it's, it's a small price to pay. And at the end of the day, some, yes, there are some cashback rewards, but if it means that you get to stay on track, yeah, then it's not that big of a price to pay. And I still get rewards with my regular credit card. It's not like I still have the, all my regular subscriptions on there that right. I pay for. I just, I know that I'm staying within my amount on the credit card. Yeah. That all that will be paid for. Yeah. Hmm. So it's, it's a simple concept, yeah. um, but it's, it's helped in yeah. touching on that human aspect of behavior aspect. Again, changing your environment, not necessarily changing who we are as humans. Yeah. Cause that won't necessarily change. Yeah. Wow. Well, that was so informative. And that made, I have to go and write down all of my expenses and everything now. No. And it's, it, yeah. So up. Uh, when I get the online calculator up and running, yeah, I can, send it, I can send you the link and you can put that on wherever you feel like it. But Definitely. yeah, and then if after after we talk about cash flow, once we finally dial it down, then that's when we start to talk about okay, where do we want to go? Map out these 
these points on the map on a map which we call a wealth map yeah and we say okay we want to go here we want to do this we want to do this we want to do this and then after that we we create something called the design wealth strategy it's pretty much what's the path what path are we going to use to get there right so that's when we start to have a little bit of the conversation of well based on the fact that we want to do this and this at this time period maybe a tfsa will get us there mm -hmm. or an rsp is better for this scenario yeah. uh or this again that's when the tools of the trade come in assuming they are needed right because it's i i do have clients that don't have any investments or any insurance or any of that mm. that's not our focus right now because that's that's just not and it might not ever be in the cards mm -hmm. so why should i, I we kind of like graduate from seeing you i guess yeah why would they so they would come and see you for multiple sessions and then you get them to this point and then mm -hmm. how do they kind of decide that they're steady or they're able to not have to come and see you good question so the graduation point without a little tongue in, i guess without being too aggressive the day you pass away is kind of when you're when you're done when you're done with us and True. the reason why we say that is life changes yeah life changes and especially for myself who focuses on individuals that are younger and mm -hmm. starting out in jobs and starting out in careers or those that are recently graduated and want to start looking at oh this student debt might be something that's worrying me or I, I, what we implement today is probably not going to be the same thing in 10 years from now yeah and yeah as your situation changes and well the example i gave is like right now i have i have vacations planned i have uh I have all like for me i'm a big traveler mm -hmm. I, I love traveling i've been to i think 21 countries and counting i say but it's I, I know that if i have little Jose juniors running around one day yeah that for me it's not because i don't want to do that but my, my, my priorities have changed yeah yeah my priorities have changed and not because i'm upset about it it's just it's changed so therefore everything leading to that and the plan should change as well mm -hmm. yeah interesting so then yeah then they could i guess be stable in their current situation and then check back in when something is changing in their life well one yes we tell people to tell us when something's changing but we also check in on you how yeah. are things going these are some things that we said we were going to do um how have you been doing on that and again keeping that individuals accountable because when left to their own devices we we, we get busy we mm -hmm. get busy with work we get busy with family and our own priorities start getting put on the back burner we're very easy to we we understand that when bills are due they have a due date and we pay on for yeah. them but when it comes to our own goals and our own due dates we're very flexible on them when mm -hmm. like why why are we flexible on our own dates and not for others yeah yeah so again that's where we come in right. sure later yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> We, yeah. we, we continue to say, hey, how is that going? You had this, you had this deadline, you should be here. Mm -hmm. or, what have you done to get yourself at this point? Like, for example, uh, you said that you were going to research on a vacation. You, you should be actually booking flights. At, according to our timeline, you should be booking flights. Are you? Yeah. And that's where the answer, yes or no, <laughs> and why not? Yeah. Yeah, did something come up where they had to spend that money or exactly something like that priorities change i again i don't know yeah so then once 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 we finally get the strategy we implement it and say awesome let's get this going but to your point we we aren't ever done yeah we aren't ever done because life changes even through retirement mm -hmm. i think the big thing for retirees is even though we primarily focus on uh, for myself, I focus on younger individuals kind of starting out their career. My business partner, he focuses on young families. Yeah. Retirees have even found that they know how much they need to spend in retirement in order for them to l spend as much as they can, as well as knowing that it, they're not going to run out of money. Right. Yeah. Because that's a big fear for a lot of retirees. There was a study done that retirees are spending 2% less every year, mm -hmm. not because they're not wanting to buy things but because they're not sure how much they can spend yeah so you take away the two percent and add two percent inflation well you're now you're four, you're losing four percent of purchasing power every 
year. Yeah, and you're supposed to be enjoying your retirement. <laughs> I, I think you are. <laughs> I, I would like to think so. Yeah, I know. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you for being on my podcast. That was no. awesome. And I'll be in touch with you when uh, when it comes out. I, I don't know what date it'll come out on the top of my head, but yeah, I'll be in touch with you. And then, yeah, if you want to send me that link to that, when it comes out, the calculator, I can put it up as well. Yeah, for sure. I'm more than happy to send that. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time today. And Thank uh, you. yeah, we'll be in touch. Sounds good then. Okay. Bye. Bye.